Oh, what is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. I actually meant to have this video up much earlier today, and my internet kept conking on. And if you guys have been with my channel for a long time, you know I was a cable technician. When I first started making videos on this channel, a lot of times I'd have the green vest. I'd be in my cable uniform. Um, so I had to troubleshoot. So it turns out my work computer, I work from home four days a week, was slowing down my internet. I turned it off, and lo and behold, that fixed it. So if any of you guys have an internet trouble, that's the first thing you want to look at. A lot of times when you have an old device in your home, whatever is the slowest device in your home is what is 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 the way that your internet is going to operate on every device within your home. So there's a little cable advice for you. Uh, <laughs> but all kidding aside, sometimes you get a little lesson when you come here outside of New York Giants football. Let's jump into the major story of the day. And I hope all of you guys are enjoying your victory Monday as much as I am as a New York Giants fan. It is now our sixth victory Monday in seven weeks. And it feels great uh, to, be able to, to, to be able to experience it with you guys after a lot of long years of misery. And there's a lot of things to talk about today. Of course, yesterday, the New York Giants suffered a plethora of injuries. Nothing new there. Um, but one injury in particular really scared the hell out of us with Evan Neal. Um, seemingly some good news came out from that. In addition to that, Daniel Bellinger, not so good news, but not the worst of news. We'll jump into that as well, along with Ben Bredesen, who's actually been playing pretty well for the New York Giants over the last couple of weeks. But the Giants lost two members of their starting offensive line and their starting tight end um, in yesterday's game. And a lot of us worried that, that they could potentially be season-ending injuries when we saw them take place. That does not seem to be the case as of now. I'll jump into everything that was said today regarding that. I also want to jump into the new locker room mentality. You know, I, I, a couple of weeks ago, when the New York Giants were 2-0, 3-1, I heard it, you heard it, it was all over Twitter. People kept saying, oh, you're the worst team ever. So I adopted that. And I said, the New York Giants are the worst team ever to do this. Anytime they accomplish something good, I ran with it. I had fun. Uh, that tweet actually blew up. You guys loved it. And everybody started saying it. Not saying I'm not taking credit for it. But everybody started adopting that underdog mentality because that's what New York Giants fans love. Well, the players are starting to adopt it as well. I'll jump into some of the things that Kayvon Thibodeau had to say about things that are being said about this football team, whether it be the media, whether it be other fan bases. Same thing can be said for Xavier McKinney, and it seems like the players are jumping on board with it as well. I also want to touch on what Brian Dable had to say, had to say rather regarding yesterday's game and how he never seems complacent. And as a Giants fan, I absolutely love it. And the players are adopting it as well. You saw Julian Love have a similar quote. I didn't pull it up in this video, but Julian Love basically said, we're not really happy. We know we got a long ways to go before we get where we, to where we want to be. You're 6-1, and one, and you're nowhere near where you want to be. I love hearing that as a Giants fan. This team is hungry. This team just wants to continue to improve week over week over week. And it's not just about winning football games. It's about, it's about playing well. It's about closing out these football games, which Brian Dable talked about, which really amped me up as a New York Giants fan. So we're going to jump into all that. The other thing I wanted to touch on is just how good of a rushing attack the New York Giants have had. Just yesterday, going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars, the New York Giants ranked fourth coming in. They were going up against the number three ranked rushing defense in all of football. And the Giants ran for 238 yards. They had two rushes over 100 yards, uh, 236 yards, I should say. And it's the second time this year in which the New York Giants have ran for over 200 yards from within a game. Okay? And they continue to dominate on the ground against one of the best run defenses in football. You got to go all the way back to 2011. Between 2021 and 2011, a 10-year sample size, the New York Giants only rushed for over six 200 yards six times throughout that entire 10-year period. They've already done it twice this year. Week one against the Tennessee Titans and this past week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And now the New York Giants have the number one rushing attack in the National Football League. Incredible stuff. For the New York Giants, as that offense continues to dominate, and you want to hear even better news? The next three weeks, the New York Giants go up against the 30th, the 31st, and the 32nd ranked rushing attacks in the NFL. That's right. We're playing the three worst running defenses in all of football, at least through seven weeks, over our next three games between the Seattle Seahawks, the Houston Texans, and the Detroit Lions. So what do you think the game the game plan is going to be? Give it to Saquon, the RPO with Daniel Jones, and get things cooking. Now, if they try to do what Jacksonville did and stuff the box, Daniel Jones will punish him with his arm like, he, like he's been doing when given the opportunity. But really excited for where this season is headed. Definitely have a lot of content up on the channel this week. I know I told you guys that I was going to go live today, do a call-in show. If you were in my live stream yesterday, I decided to wait because I know I think Bad Dog typically does like his Victory Monday stream. So I'm gonna he'll, he'll do that today. I'm assuming he's going to do it. 
and I'll probably go live tomorrow. Start a call-in show because a lot of you guys were asking for that to come, come on via video chat. I'm going to try to have a different Giants content creator each time that I do it. So hopefully I'll have time to do that tomorrow. I think I will. So I wanted to make note of that as well. In this video, though, we're going to touch on all the injuries. We're going to touch on the locker room development. And we're going to touch on where this New York Giants team is headed. Let's start with the injury news because that was obviously what we were, you know, on pins and needles about going into today. This is coming out from Paul Schwartz of the New York Post. Rookie tight end Daniel Bellinger will have surgery later this week to repair a fractured eye socket and septum. It is not believed to be a season-ending injury. So, of course, that's great news. You hear the, you hear those words and you get petrified. Uh, you know, a, a septum surgery. So not the best news for Daniel Bellinger, but very good news in the sense that it doesn't seem like it's going to be career debilitating. It doesn't seem like it's something that is going to require him to miss the remainder of the season. And the fact that the New York Giants, and we're going to touch on this, I think Paul Schwartz made note of it later in his article, uh, if there was going to be injuries to some of these players, this was the best time for it to happen due to the fact that the New York Giants are coming up on a bye week. So maybe they only miss a game. Maybe they only miss two. But in that sense, it was good that we have the bye week coming up. These players could rest up. And hopefully they only miss one, if not two games. We'll have to wait and see You know all the details that come out with Daniel Bellinger. This is what Dable had to say about Bellinger's injury as well. He got poked in the eye. And I would say his eye looked terrible right now, head coach Brian Dable said after the game, he looked like he took a pretty good hook shot right there. It's pretty swollen. Then this, uh, more from the uh, in terms of the injuries coming out from Paul Schwartz in the New York Post. Two offensive linemen, rookie right tackle of Neal and left guard Ben Bredesen, went down in the first half. Neal was lost to a left knee injury early in the second quarter, and he, w- he has been diagnosed with a medical collateral, collateral ligament. An MCL sprain. Most likely, Neil will be at a minimum of three weeks. The Giants got a break in their bye. It comes in week eight uh, after the week eight game against the Seahawks in Seattle. Neil will miss that game, but conceivably could return week 10 to face the Texans, having missed only one game. More likely, he could uh, return the following week against the Lions if his, knee, if his knee heals quickly. And I think this is the same injury. Somebody could correct me wrong in the comments below if I am wrong, but I think this is the same injury that was sustained by Kayvon Thibodeau at the beginning of the year, and I think he missed about a month's worth of time. He missed about two weeks in the preseason after the fact, and then he missed the first two weeks in the regular season. And I think that is worst-case timetable. I think the New York Giants were, you know, they played it very safe with Thibodeau, and they'll probably play it very safe with Neal. So maybe he misses two, maybe he misses three games, but I think it's best to, for the New York Giants to err on the side of caution, realizing that Evan Neal is a big part of the future of this football team. You don't want to mess him up at all. If the doctors clear him and he's ready to go, that's great. And hopefully he's out there sooner than later. But good news on that front. I think when we all saw the injury yesterday, a lot of us thought for sure that he he potentially could be out for the year. So we, I think that's good news, um, you know, hearing that he's probably not going to miss more than three games max. And hopefully we can make do with what we've got. I don't think the Giants are going to go out there and pick up anybody for a guy that's probably only going to miss – you know, two or three games. So they're going to have to make do with what they've got. The same can be said for Bredesen, who also suffered an injury. Um, this later in the article, Bredesen sprained his right knee in the right in the first quarter. An injury also not to, not believed to be season ending. Then he went li- on later to talk about Bellinger further in the article. Bellinger will not be easy to replace a fifth round. And then he just talked about his statistical accomplishments. And he certainly will not be easy to replace. Chris Myrick did a decent job yesterday filling in, but Bellinger's been very good for this football team. He's arguably been our best pass catcher. Um, I think he's got three touchdowns, two through the air, one on the ground, and he's been a tremendous blocker for this team as well. So it will not be easy to replace. Hopefully Bellinger and Tanner Hudson, for however long it may be, do a good job. But it sounds like Bellinger's probably going to miss this week's game, and hopefully he's back sooner than later. As far as Bredesen goes, however long he's out, you have to figure that Josh Azudu will get the first crack, the rookie guard who's struggled at times. But it'll be exciting to see him get more experience if, in fact, he does get the start this week against the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I wanted to touch on some of the things that the players had to say regarding the locker room, regarding what people feel about the New York Giants outside of the New York Giants locker room. And when I read this quote by Kayvon Thibodeau, and I didn't get a chance to hear it, I didn't get a chance to see him say it, I'm going to check that out. I got amped up. Okay? This is what he had to say. I don't care what people around the league do. Thibodeau told the New York Jersey advanced New Jersey advanced media after the game blank them. I think you know what word that is blank all the people around the league. The only people that matter are the people in this room. The only people that are going to dictate what happens on Sunday are the people in this room. Excuse my French. So he apologized. But uh, Kayvon Thibodeau showing a little bit of emotion 
as he's getting that locker room riled up. And it, it just feels like the New York Giants are buying into this us against the world mentality. Vegas picks against us every week. And they did it again this week against Seattle. And I love it as a Giants fan. And it seems like the players are buying into it as well. I mean, listen, I think the greatest thing we do is fight for respect in the locker room. When you're on that battlefield, I want you to not respect me. Then some of the other players chimed in. This was Darius Slayton. We probably still won't get it regarding respect around the league. Wide receiver Darius Slayton told NJ Advanced Media. We just seem to have a hard time getting it. They can have us down every week if they want. Defensive lineman Dexter Lawrence added. But not every giant is amused with the lack of respect of questions about it. Safety, Xavier McKinney, is tired of hearing about it and tired of talking about it. I really don't even care for the question anymore. I'm kind of tired of answering it. It's because it's the same thing every week, McKinney told reporters after the game. Obviously, we know that. I really don't care. We don't care as a team. The only thing we could do is keep focusing on what we can do and keep getting better. And that has been the, 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 the notion that has come out from Brian Dable all year. He is all about getting better. And he said anything but that he was satisfied or happy at the end of a game in which the New York Giants finished starting 6-1 and one this year. But he's hungry. And the players around him are hungry as well. This is what he had to say after the win yesterday. Made it tougher than we needed to, head coach Brian Dable said after the game. Good to get a win. Shouldn't have came down to that, though. Didn't finish the game. We should have finished the game. There are always things to clean up. And obviously, he's mainly talking about the mistakes that, Sa that Saquon Barkley going out of bounds. And Saquon Barkley is going to take this as a learning experience. By no means am I upset. I would have been upset if we lost the football game. But I think this is a learning experience. And I think this is only going to make Saquon Barkley a much better football player in, in a situation like that. Rest assured, he's never going to do that again. And I promise you, Brian Dable is going to make sure that he doesn't. Uh, Barkley later talked about it. Yeah, we should have stayed in bounds. Put it on me. That's Dable talking about this, by the way. We've got to do a better job uh, than that, Dable said. And Dable's kind of stuck up for his players all year in regards to things like this when dealing with the media. He's saying, yeah, we should have done a better job. That's on me. He's not the guy carrying the football. He's not the guy that ran out of bounds. And I understand, like, a lot of fans tried to stick up for Saquon Barker, and I love Saquon Barker, my favorite player on the team. But he's got to know better. You can't bounce that ball outside, especially on the third run. He stepped out of bounds three times. You just fall down to the ground. The clock's your friend there. And I think it'll be a learning experience. I think he's going to grow from it. And I think Brian Dable's going to, you know, coach it out of him. This is what Barkley had to say. Just got to do better. Not going to make any excuses. Just got to be better. That's really it, Barkley said. I'm expected to understand the situation. I knew the situation. I tried to get down, but got to do a better job of it. And I love hearing that. I love hearing accountability. Something we didn't hear very much with Joe Judge. Something we didn't hear very much with the prior regime. These players are taking accountability. These players are mimicking their head coach and Brian Dable. And as a Giants fan, how do you not love hearing it? Sounds like we got a leader. Sounds like we got a really good head coach. And it sounds like we got a really good football team. And the players are buying into it. In terms of the injury front, I think that's great news. Evan Neal should be back sooner than later, and hopefully he continues to build up of what he's been doing. The offensive line has really had significant uh, progress the last four weeks. The Giants have only surrendered seven sacks in the last four games combined. One of those games, we surrendered four. Only one in the other three. The first three games, we surrendered 13, and we surrendered five against the Titans and five against the Dallas Cowboys. This offensive line is getting better, and the other thing I'll say is, it's the next man up mentality. Yesterday, we lost two starting offensive linemen from within that game, yet Daniel Jones was barely touched. He was only sacked one time. And if you go back and watch the film, he really didn't roll out. He was able to hang in the pocket throughout the majority of that game. I also want to say some of the credit has to go to Daniel Jones for that. You know, we saw him throughout the game doing a lot of checks at the line of scrimmage, reading the defense, reading the coverages. And I think he set his offensive lineup for success. So I think, I think we saw a lot of growth from him. I think we saw a lot of growth from that offensive line. But I can't wait to get Evan Neal back in the lineup to see him continue to grow as a right tackle. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.